Hi, everyone. Um, we'll get started in about a minute or so. I see folks in the chat saying where they're from. Want to welcome all of y'all to this um, Black, our second Black Internationalism series panel. Um, so yeah, let's just give it about like a minute or two, um, and then we'll get started. Okay, hello everyone. Um, and welcome to the second discussion of our Black Internationalism web series hosted by uh, the Dissenters International Solidarity Committee. A huge thank you to the International Solidarity Committee for organizing this um, and for finally being able to bring it together so we can have this amazing conversation. So the subject of today's discussion is West Papua's struggle for self-determination. My name is Ngakia a member of dissenters and part of the International Solidarity Committee, as well as the Storytelling Committee. It's really good to be back. And I'm excited to be with folks today and to be joined with our amazing guest speaker, Herman Wangai. Herman Wangai is a former political prisoner, Nobel Peace Prize nominee, and leader of nonviolent struggle in West Papua, Melanesia. Wangai will share about the struggle for self-determination in West Papua, forms of popular resistance and prospects for international solidarity. Welcome, Herman. Um, so uh, Herman has a presentation for us um, and we'll get started. So the first question we have is, um, I know I introduced you a little bit, but can you introduce yourself and tell us a bit about the movement and community building and resistance work that you're a part of? Um, how should we understand um, uh, the political moment you and your community is in, and who are the dominant forces and institutions helping to shape this crisis? Oh, Herman, um, you're you're um, muted. I just okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Welcome. Uh, all right. Okay. Thank you, uh, friends and colleagues. Um, yeah, congrats uh, for this opportunity uh, uh, given to us as a West Papua and Melanesian people. Uh, yeah, myself, uh, uh, my name is uh, Herman uh, yeah, Wengai. Uh, yeah, you can see from the screen. Uh, uh, so that's, I come from the island uh, of Yapen uh, called uh, Sirui uh, in West Papua, the north side of uh, West Papua, Melanesia. Uh, I'm a yeah, former yeah, political uh, prisoner. Uh, I've been uh, involved in the struggle of uh, West Papuan people since uh, 1989. Uh, so for yeah, three decades, uh, I dedicated uh, my life uh, to join other friends, uh, West Papuan Freedom Fighters, to promote the ideas of the nonviolence yeah, struggle or nonviolence movement, uh, uh, which uh, in West Papua, uh, especially, were founded by yeah, one of the West Papuan leaders uh, related to uh, my family. So I call him as a 
uh, uncle, uh, my dear uncle, uh, Dr. Tom uh, Waingai, uh, that time was uh, uh, yeah, sentenced by Indonesian government for 20 years um, after he proclaimed that uh, uh, independence of West Papua under the name of the Melanesian, that's a uh, black, black uh, people, oh, no, dark skin that's uh, been living in, 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 in our island uh, for the God creation. So we, we describe us as a Melanesian as a Melanesian people. Uh, so Republic of West Melanesian, the one that so we promote the non-violent struggle we learn from the uh, uh, Dr. Gandhi, uh, uh, learn from the successful movement in India. So the time I, I, I yeah, uh, start to, to learn about the struggle. So I particip part, yeah, participate eh, in our struggle uh, to challenge uh, Indonesian uh, Indonesian uh, government uh, because yeah, Indonesian government yeah, occupy our our land. Mm -hmm. So since then, that uh, since 1989, when Dr. Tom was sentenced for 20 years while he was in prison for a yeah, couple of years, and they killed him in 1996, uh, seven years later. So in 1966, uh, Indonesian government uh, authority that killed him uh, while he was in prison. Uh, so it's, it's, it's inspire all entire West Papuan people, including uh, yeah, myself, because at that time I yeah, also yeah, involved uh, when my young age as a young student at the university or uh, transition between the night uh, high school to the university. Uh, and then, yeah, because my uncle, killed by Indonesian government and then I left college and start the yeah uh, one of the uh, resistance movement uh, we call uh, West Papua National Authority uh, it's like a Palestine Authority for instance in Palestine uh, movement uh, called uh, Palestine Authority uh, to against the Israel uh, auto, uh, like occupation so we are we are funded the West Papua National Authority and together with other indigenous groups, West Papua and Melanesian, and we launched the I mean, a peaceful protest against the Indonesia. Uh, continue even though Dr. Tom was yeah, killed by Indonesian government because we are aware that uh, the occupation of uh, our land, uh, like uh, Indonesian occupation in our land, is illegal occupation, and human rights violations uh, continues uh, happen. Uh, towards uh, our people. Mm. So as a result, eh, as a result, I was yeah, uh, arrested and jailed in West Papua. That's why I am a former, uh, yeah, as a former, like in my introduction, as a former political prisoner, uh, twice in Indonesian prison. So the second time, yeah, I spent time with, uh, yeah, other friends, uh, our West Papuan leader uh, in, in, in in yeah, 2002, uh, so uh, when you learn about the the struggle, uh, so to understand uh, to understand that uh, yeah what uh, we are going through, uh, yeah I hope uh, you can learn and the the main uh, instigator of the conflict uh, in West Papua is the Indonesian government itself. Uh, Indonesian government is. Itself. So historically, uh, West Papua was never part of uh, Indonesia. Mm. Uh, but yeah, in 1969, you can uh, read this like how the UN intervened and handed over my people, uh, uh, my my country, uh, our country, to Indonesian control. So since since that time, that uh, in the in the genus West Papua, uh, since the the in Indonesian government uh, colonized our our land. Uh, uh, we 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 didn't agree uh, with the uh, Indonesia and with, and with the result that uh, some referendum of like yeah you you can read that in 1969 they conduct the the referendum and we call this was same referendum uh, we saw that less than one percent of the population uh, uh, vote in favor of the West Papuan being part of uh, uh, Indonesia. Uh, so Indonesia has been using its a military 
uh, military uh, uh, force to suppress any challenge is illegal claim of them with deadly uh, consequence like yeah was that I'm yeah thanks God because I'm still alive and I escaped from my country and now I'm in in, in US and try to say that and so uh, the yeah for almost yeah five decades and Indonesia ten uh, yeah our wonderful home uh, paradise land West Papuan land uh, we describe as a paradise paradise land uh, to become uh, yeah. What well, is like yeah, into one of the most military uh, militarized zone in the world. Uh, so, with military and police base, yeah, stretch of from the Jayapura, Sorong, like all over in West Papua, uh, they are watching. So, everywhere in West Papua, you can see uh, Indonesian military base everywhere uh, uh, in the north, south, uh, east, west, uh, in the mountain, in the village, everywhere. That's Indonesian military base. Um, so every 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 West Papua when they get involved in struggle uh, for our people, yeah, they are yeah being uh, arrested and yeah being like yeah, live in prison uh, for now like our our friends there in West Papua some now some West Papuan activists are living in prison like our 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 young uh, yeah activists or young leader West Papuan leader uh, organize organize the people mobilize people his name is. Uh, Victor Yemu, uh, Victor Yemu was yeah. Uh, is now currently now is in Indonesian uh, prison uh, and left that time because the challenge Indonesian government and and so yeah, we see how the 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 struggle in West Papua is very difficult and still close uh, to international uh, uh, community. So uh, to understand and. Um, yeah, what we are going through, uh, yeah, I would say that uh, every readers or oh, yeah must yeah uh, read. Uh, you do a lot of uh, your own research on Google or uh, meet someone from West Papuan leaders, yeah, like myself or other friends. Maybe you can you can yeah know a little bit about what's happening in West Papua, the country that human rights abuses uh, still continue. Uh, 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 reported by the different newspapers um, right now, like in the, in the chance of the social media and the technology that bring all the information out from our country to campaign. So using the social media and all, and yeah, especially and when you see the, uh, there are a couple of report, a uh, couple of report uh, uh, by the, the group in Asia, uh, ASEAN report. Uh, that was human rights group in ASEAN. Uh, they outlining uh, outlining the various uh, crimes the Indonesian government uh, against in the indigenous West Papua and going back to the 1980s uh, like I already start that like since 1980s so all the report is very clear how the Indonesian government uh, yeah, kill many West Papuan people human rights violation happening and genocide is currently happening in West Papua. And yeah, of course, you can learn from yeah, our now like uh, in the US, we establish a West Papua and a human rights center. Uh, and we regularly uh, yeah, host a yeah, meeting in various uh, location and social media uh, in, in DC, uh, our, because our base in DC, not Northern Virginia here. Uh, yeah, we yeah, try to, to explain to Indonesia this is what's happening right now in 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 my country, in in our 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 country right now. So, yeah, I think uh, what I want to yeah saying this time is since then, uh, since Indonesia, that's like yeah, Indonesian military military operation is 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 is, is very brutal towards our people. So I think that's something that I. Yeah, would like to say to begin or to answer that's your question or response right now. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and all of your experience of resistance in your homeland of West Papua against the Indonesian government. Um, so now we kind of want to uh, talk a little bit about internationalism. So what does internationalism mean to you? And what does black internationalism mean to you? And how or why are these concepts um, important for or reflected in the work um, that you're involved in? 
Yes. Uh, yeah, for us, uh, for us as a West Papuan people, as a Melanesian people, West Papuan Melanesian, West Melanesian, uh, yeah. International uh, nationalism is the is the is the concept uh, concept of the multinational uh, co cooperation on various uh, uh, issues and yeah uh, it's a it's a, it is a crucial uh, it's a crucial uh, to to our our world that's as we begin spreading our message seeking uh, yeah support from the the others 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 yeah, UN member state. Or in Africa, Europe, US, Asia, and 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 yeah, uh, in in the Pacific as well. Uh, so so we 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 believe that uh, in becoming part of the an international movement of colonized or oppressed people of yeah other country, that's something that's uh, the idea. Uh, together we can be shared and learn. Uh, for instance, like today when you hosting this meeting, this is something that's how. Uh, very important for us as a West Papuan. How internationalism is 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 very very important to to stand together as a as a as a yeah as a yeah as a people as a people to to learn uh, because we 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 face uh, different conflict and, and we have to be uh, yeah in same same idea about the how important of internationalism so when when related to the our identity our identity as a melanesian or uh, in the what uh, uh, greek uh, language uh, uh, greek language uh, melanesia means uh, the island one island that's been living uh, i mean lived there for hundreds of years like uh, dark skin, those people are dark skin, uh, it's like black skin. So we are West Papuan, we are Melanesian, we are black people living in, in our island. Uh, so this is like how how the black nationalism is, is, is already start from the God creation. Mm, uh, from the, so that's the concept of, of pride and the struggle to be free from any, any, any form of oppression. So we don't believe that, uh, Colonization is continue until today in this in this uh, era to uh, to suppress any 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 uh, yeah, race uh, like what for instance what Indonesian uh, do for 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 our our people so in our case we call ourselves as the Melanesian people yeah? uh, of West Papua yeah? like I said as Melanesian means that we are black or dark skin uh, had, had been then in Hamilton of uh, our island in, in New Guinea. So this concept are very important uh, for us when you ask this question. So it's very, very important. So this question are important because they reflect, reflect on, I mean, reflect uh, our struggle for independence or self-determination uh, uh, to have our country. Uh, so next slide. Yes. Yeah. You can. You can. You can see how we we try to. Yeah. Yeah. Give some uh, background like how Indonesian. Uh, yeah. Declare uh, its independence uh, in 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 ninety. Yeah. I think that's that's a that's a question for for. I mean, un, my 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 response to that question like how the means to us uh, for what does it like internationalism and, uh, and yeah so yeah um yeah thank you so much for for um sharing all of this with us um learning a lot um so i know that you've touched on these topics a bit um as you're talking but what do concepts like imperialism militarism authoritarianism and capitalism mean for you? How are they relevant or not relevant to understanding uh, the changing conditions uh, that you're struggling against? Yes, uh, yeah. I think this is because uh, the the people people uh, in our our people they are they are facing this kind of the concept huh? uh, and in in our daily life uh, since Indonesia yeah occupy our land so. 
yeah, we all we all uh, experience uh, imperialism uh, from from uh, from Indonesia. Uh. So this is like like I'm 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 talking about them from the from the our point of uh, uh, us few of the West Papuan people. So uh, we all experience imperialism uh, from Indonesia for the past yeah almost yeah, sixty years. Yeah. And so Indonesia is uh, yeah, has completely uh, yeah control uh, our people. It's told our 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 natural resources, uh, including anyone that dare uh, uh, to to challenge uh, their government. Uh, uh, like uh, as I, I explained uh, earlier, that uh, you know, now uh, West Papua, uh, West Papuan uh, land or uh, Melanesian land is is uh, flooded uh, by I mean flooded with the Indonesian people, mainly uh, to keep the people complete uh, control using the military tactic. Uh, that's military force in, in West Papua, such as uh, intimidation, violence, arrest, and protest and execution. Uh, so no place in the Pacific as in the Pacific of Asia is more military or police watching every movement in West Papua, like what we we are we are we are yeah, facing in in our country, uh, except uh, yeah in in my country and in West Papua. So Indonesian uh, yeah Indonesia yeah. Auto, yeah, auto, the auto uh, in is it's very evidence because yeah, like I explained, I involved in West Papua since 1989. Uh, I witnessed how the the Indonesian auto is is evidence uh, in West Papua. Even though now, like I've been living in exile, uh, in exile, but I I I I I noticed that that is how people they still experience uh, how they auto Auto, auto, auto dictatorship. That's how Indonesian government do for, for our people. So they don't consult, they don't consult. For instance, they don't consult uh, our people when they pass uh, the law or regulation. It's the, it's, it's the way how, uh, how they, they do for us. For instance, uh, in, 19, yeah, in 2011, uh, uh, when I put like in, in, in my screen, in my presentation, PowerPoint is in 2007, in 2007, uh, when indigenous uh, people a declaration adopted by the United Nations, this is the same years, same years, the indigenous, one of the indigenous people uh, uh, declaration is giving a um, platform for the indigenous people around the, the world to have their own self-determination, including us in West Papua to have our country. That's under the, the declaration of indigenous people passed by the UN resolution. Uh, that, that year, same years in 2007, Indonesian government they come up with the regulation number 77, in which all the cultural symbol are, are illegal. They make illegal of our life. So people, they raise the, the cultural symbols related to their freedom. They, they got arrested and they spent time in jail for for many years this is, is this is the the true story what happened in west papua until now because the indonesian government uh, concept to to yeah minimize that i mean actually our 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 symbol so this is the uh, how people live in west papua uh, people there don't have any freedom uh, so i think this is something that i would like to say about that yeah, your question mm. Thank you so much um, for sharing all of that with us. Um, and uh, I know that there was a question asked in the chat a little bit about this, but um, how can communities based in the US, uh, like those of us at the centers, support um, these struggles um, from where we are um, to be in deeper solidarity with you and um, with your community? Yes. Uh... I think this is another good question uh, for, for us as West Papua. Yeah. You know, when I came to US for the first time uh, in 2009, I was yeah, standing uh, in New York City, uh, Times Square. This is my, my own experience. I asked uh, someone from those people that they, they walk on the street, did you know, have you heard about West Papua before? Have you heard about what's going on in West Papua, or if you don't know about West Papua, West Papua is uh, very close to Australia. Uh, but I found almost 17 people, I asked them, they never know 
about what's happening in West Papua in my country. That's in 2009. That's I, I was standing in Times Square. I, I asked everyone just walk past by me and I just say, okay, uh, I'm from this island, but no one. So yeah, until today, when I come as a yeah, visiting scholar at, at George Mason University, I've been I also asked the question for the students here in the US. Do you know about West Papua? Do you know about the Melanesian? You know, what's going on in West Papua? Genocide happened in, in the Pacific, in the Melanesian island, West Papua. No one don't know. I mean, they, they don't, they have no idea about what's happened. So yeah, first it's important to understand the history, the history behind the Indonesian occupation. So that's why I start to like, yeah, try to how we can, okay, now we use that Zoom social media campaign to hold workshop and yeah, try to yeah, even though like in the last couple of years, that's how uh, COVID affected people around the world and how people yeah have to learn uh, through the social media, use the social media uh, for for yeah upcoming event or organize the event so people they can they can learn and they cover all the topics uh, they they need what they need to know about what's happening in West Papua and yeah and second one they say yeah, yeah try to yeah. Uh, we have to yeah, spread, yeah, learn about West Papua. After you learn about West Papua, you know, you have knowledge about West Papua, you start to, to, to talk to your friends or your family members or in the church or in the university or any level. So, yeah, so people, uh, they can understand because most of people here, they never heard about West Papua, like I mentioned earlier, that's in, in US. People didn't, didn't know about what's happening. So just, yeah, encourage them then to, to learn about West Papua and learn. Yeah, and also, yeah, if you yeah want to join yeah, our our people in back home in West Papua, yeah, you can organize a peaceful protest outside the Indonesian uh, consulate or, or embassy, uh, like here here in DC, we hold uh, protests, uh, 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 and uh, yeah, protest in in in, in Washington DC, uh, uh, yeah, related to the very I mean important I mean. Uh, event that's uh, related to the, our struggle. Huh? Uh, so people, they can start to, to learn. And yeah, attending the, the protest is also one of the international solidarity you showing to us as a West Papua. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I think that's uh, something that yeah, I would like to share uh, today. It's very important how you, you, you be part of this movement. Uh, so also, yeah, like today we're having this uh, conversation yeah, I do believe that yeah, maybe people that don't know about West Papua before or they want to learn, yeah, they can they can do their own research. Mm. Thank you so much. Um, so we have a couple of questions from the chat. Um, I just have one last question to ask you. Um, so what to you does resistance look like? Um, could you expand a little bit more on West Papuan resistance against the Indonesian state and what that looks like and what that has looked like in your experience? And um, how does care, how does healing within the resistance uh, fit into everyday resistance practices for you, Herman? Yes, I think uh, uh, you know, one one thing I, 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 I do believe that if if myself, uh, because we've been going through with the difficulties situation. If if I don't speak up, if I don't speak up about the movement, about uh, the the struggle of uh, my people, I feel sick. Uh, I feel sick. Uh, it's something like a uh, how you, someone uh, yeah when you help someone got the traumas, eh? trauma, tra 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 yeah, traumatized by the any any oppression. You have to speak up. Mm. Have healing coming when you speak up, you you to talk up, you you explain the situation who we are. Uh, so for, for Papuan people, uh, when I live now in in, in exile, uh, like yeah, I mentioned earlier that if I don't speak up about what's going on in West Papua, it's not help uh, my country at all. I feel sick if, in US. I feel sick if I don't speak up. 
about what's going on in West Papua. So that's why the continues of the West Papuan struggle today against the occupation. And also, yeah, I, I learn and, and West Papuan people, they learn also from the other, 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 other uh, successful uh, movement from around the world or here in US in black history of the, how the, uh, our friends here, how what's happening in the past. We learn how the importance of the people's voice uh, to, to, to defend themselves, how, how people to join hands together and create the movement together. It's, it's, it's very uh, yeah, important uh, for us. So we, we do hope that uh, yeah, our friends out there, uh, when you learn about West Papua, you want to create the movement. Yeah. Yeah, don't forget about what's happening in West Papua. Your brothers and sisters, as a, as a black people, as a Melanesian people, they are facing uh, atrocity every day in their, their own life. Thank you so much. It's um, just hearing you talking about how in everyday practices, we should continue to talk about what's going on, no matter where you are, um, to right. continue to talk about that and incorporate that conversation everywhere you go. That's such an important practice and it's definitely something that we can continue to do every single day. So that's that really hit home for me. Um, one question that we have from someone is, um, can you describe what it feels like or what it looks like to live under um, Indonesia's colonial control? Yes, you know, I explained earlier that because I got involved in West Papua struggle since 1989. So, you know, uh, the current situation, the Indonesian government, the current the president, um, uh, uh, Mr. Joko Widodo, is the this, this seven uh, presidents in the counting of the how Indonesian uh, well, yeah, uh, independence, since the independence in 1945. So, yeah. Indonesian president the chance almost seven seven yeah seven times now under the administration, but from from us the West Papuan people, um, we've been uh, experienced. It's like for instance, we don't have a freedom of speech. Um, freedom of speech in West Papua is never experienced by the Papuan people. When they want to get in together, getting together to pray together about the the right. Indonesian military came and break up of the uh, prey gathering. So yeah, we can say that's like under what they call uh, religious freedom. Uh, sometimes yeah, we feel like we don't have religious freedom. How, how, how come Papuan people they want to come together, pray together to their freedom? In the church, military and police come and arrested people when they were in, in the church. They just want to pray before they go to the street to leading the protest. Uh, so this has happened since the yeah, Indonesian occupation. So my own experience when I lead the protest in 1980, like yeah, 80s and 90s, uh, today when I live in exile, my people, my friends, they continue organize the peaceful protest. They yeah, get arrested and living in prison. So nothing changed. Uh, Indonesian government arresting people in, in 1980s, 99 under President Suharto, the dictator super president, they call Mr. Suharto, late Suharto, continue with the other presidents, continue with the other president administration, another president administration. And today the current presidents of Indonesia, Mr. Joko Widodo, they try to promote the special autonomy, but under special autonomy project, that's a funding by the Western people, Western country, uh, including US, British, Australia, and Europe. They try to uh, support Indonesia with the special autonomy project, but under the special autonomy project, uh, the Indonesian use this suppress Papuan people. People don't have freedom, freedom of expression, uh, to gathering, freedom of speech, freedom of the gathering. Uh, so how, how can uh, Indonesian government want to explain to uh, to international community, they are democratic country. This is something that's a shame for Indonesia itself. Uh, so when I attending the couple of meeting at the UN, uh, I, I, I heard about the, how the Indonesian diplomat, they explain the, the role the Indonesian government towards our people. But I, my question is, 
if you say like people have a freedom, how about the people they are living now in, in, in prison? They are more than yeah, 50 people. They are living in Indonesian prison right now. They just want to express their political yeah, aspiration, uh, democratic aspiration or human right aspiration. And also, why shouldn't you allow the United Nations uh, uh, Human Rights uh, yeah, Commission area, investigation team from the UN to visit West Papua? Why shouldn't you open the international access to West Papua so people from the, from the outside, they can visit, including diplomat or any human rights group to be yeah, operate or they're funding more, more research in West Papua? Or let the UN, uh, let the international journalists to visit West Papua, uh, so they can they can find out. So this is something that West Papuan people is still close to the outside world. But yeah, uh, like I said, thank God social media is uh, help us to 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 expand the, the 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 current situation. So when you talk about the Indonesian occupation, yeah, yeah, I can I can I can say here freely. Uh, but if like I'm now having the meeting in, in West Papua in my country, that's, I'm, I'm, I will uh, face the Indonesian military authority. They already come to my next window or ni my next uh, door. Or Herman is talking now about West Papua. So this means in few minutes, I can see the Indonesian military will be standing outside in my, my door. Uh, this is something the real uh, situation in West Papua. So the case of the, how people they promote uh, using the social media, they also got, I mean, arrested by the Indonesian authority through the, the intelligence work, how they arrest the people, so students, activists, because they promote the, the cause of the West Papuan through the social media. And also, yeah, other, other experience from the, uh, our friends from the, yeah, in, in the Pacific, the one journalist when they try to visit West Papua, but they also got caught at courts by the Indonesian authority and they, went through the yeah uh, yeah uh, what they call the immigration process and got arrested and spent time in, in jail uh, for a few months before they deported by the Indonesian government. So West Papua is still close by uh, yeah it's still close to the outside world. Thank you so much for sharing and I definitely agree Jaira shameful moves um, by the UN. Um, I wanted to say, Kim, welcome. We see you and uh, like everyone has been saying in the chat, we're recognizing how uh, the Hawaiian struggle for resistance against military occupation is deeply connected um, with the Melanesian struggle within West Papua and in so many places. So uh, Kim, welcome. Um, uh, we have a question from Ren. Um, so at the centers, we focus our work around targeting US weapons, manufacturers who arm and profit from wars and wars waged abroad. In West Papua, do you see connections between US imperialism and militarism in the in Indonesian occupation and militarization of West Papua? Yes, we, we see that it's very clear. It's like how the Indonesian military militarization uh, uh, that's a, they got the support also the military equipment uh, by the, uh, yeah, that's a, yeah, by the US, but also from Australia and also the other British country uh, and also the Europe. Uh, they, they provide the diplomatic support uh, and for Indonesia and also provide the military training for Indonesian. Uh, so this is something, uh, yeah, I was thinking how we can yeah, get the connection, try to raise our consent together to the US Congress uh, to how uh, stop the military training or stop uh, uh, provide the military uh, assistance to Indonesian government. Uh, we have to stop this because after uh, yeah, they got the training from uh, America or Australia or other country in, 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 in Europe, those people, Indonesian military uh, general, they got the knowledge and they returned to Indonesia and the, yeah, put them in, in West Papua and they, they practice they how use their military uh, knowledge to continue to kill West Papua. Uh, uh, so this is something that's uh, extremely uh, uh, Papuan people facing. So yeah, we have to yeah, yeah, raise our consent together to US government or any government, Western government to stop uh, provide the military training to Indonesia. If you no funding, not to give the funding. Um, uh, 
Yeah, thank you so much um, for sharing that. And that was, yeah, a great qu question, Ren. Um, definitely connected to a lot of the work that we're doing. Um, so we have a question here. Um, Herman, do you have any comments on the proposed Eastern provinces the Indonesian government plans on creating? Was there any input but by West Papuans in this endeavor? Yes, uh, this is, uh, there have been a lot of uh, protests uh, on the ground. Papuan people have been organized uh, uh, massive protests about the against, I mean, they don't want, we don't want uh, Indonesia to try to create more provinces or divided Papuan land to become piece of the province, piece of the province. Uh, now that's uh, because you, you know, that's, our population has become a minority in our own land. Uh, but the Papuan people, they're wasting how the, the population come from the outside the West Papua. So the benefit for us in West Papua is, is zero, it's, it's minus, uh, because there's all the Eastern province they created that try to bring all the Indonesian people to come to West Papua. But also when you create a uh, province in West Papua, this means Indonesian create the three military base, uh, the commando. Uh, if like you three, three province, that means you create more military uh, operation in West Papua. You have, they have a three commando, three uh, headquarters in West Papua. At right now, only two headquarters. But if they want to create more provinces in West Papua, that means become four or five provinces or three provinces, that means three head headquarters, military headquarters. That means bring more military people to come to West Papua, bring more Indonesian people come to West Papua. But our population become in, yeah, increase less. Uh, so this is a biggest challenge for us in West Papua. And so we, we don't agree. As so now it's still like continue going on in West Papua, a lot of protests. Uh, in West Papua, uh, from our friends, uh, our students, activists, they organize what they call a uh, uh, people petition, uh, people uh, people uh, petition of a Papuan people uh, to against Indonesian government that we don't agree about the any any government regulation to to force us to accept the more provinces they created in West Papua, but it's still. Like yeah, like I say in, in the in the earlier my presentation, Indonesian government yeah use the military force to Im, Im apply this kind of idea of creating more 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 profits in West Papua. Mm. Thank you so much. Um, I uh, have another question here, and then again, um, definitely y'all can ask more questions in the chat. Um, so what specific movements um, and black resistance movements from around the world, whether they be in the US or throughout Africa, um, have inspired the work that you do um, and have inspired um, resistance movements throughout West Papua? Yes, I think uh, we are very, uh, I mean, we are, we are learned from the successful uh, movement from the other, other part of the world. Uh, uh, for instance, yeah. Myself, I learned from the successful movement of the uh, uh, our brothers and sisters in South Africa, uh, Nelson Mandela. How the the apartheid, the political apartheid, the the dominion in 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 Africa, and this is very similar. Uh, it's happening also the like political like the apartheid, the system. Maybe in 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 in, in South Africa they call it apartheid. But there's the same situation in West Papua we have faced that. So we learn each other. We learn each other how the successful movement. Uh, yeah, non-violence, non-violence. Uh, we are the black people that uh, we have started the non-violence struggle uh, get connected. And also, yeah, we are as a human being, uh, as a human being. Of course, we don't want uh, yeah, our freedom uh, is, is stolen by the others. Uh, uh, yeah. People, uh, yeah, we, we were born uh, by our mother. Uh, our mother don't teach us to to be killed, someone uh, uh, to be killer. Uh, that's uh, something that's a uh, uh, Papuan people. We we believe that uh, uh, okay, if our 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 brothers and sisters in West Papua, we are suffering. We cannot we cannot we cannot self. Um, I mean, help ourselves. We have other people have to help us uh, because 
this is now we are living in the global, uh, I mean, part of the global community that's uh, always UN practice. I mean, they, they preach the, 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 the yeah, good words, a democratic country, but yeah. We see the other part, maybe they have freedom, but the other part, people are still struggling, like in West Papua, we are facing. So how we can get the, get yeah, get connected together and standing together as international solidarity, uh, how we feel together. Uh, if like, uh, so now West Papua and people, yeah, we are feel uh, militarization. I mean, the militarization that uh, we are facing, we, we need uh, to stand up together to, to help our brothers and sisters in West Papua. So yeah, I, I think uh, this is something that I would like to respond to, to all how important is, yeah. We don't want to see any, any uh, yeah, black people or dark skin surprised by the other any car. We have to, yeah, equal right is, is always, yeah, have to be uh, as a God's people uh, living together harmony. Um, Thank you so much. Um, and just uh, one last question. It's kind of a compilation of different questions from um, people here. So um, Graciela asks, are there any book re recommendations to learn more about um, West Papua? And Janat asked the same kind of uh, similar question. Um, so are there any uh, movement organizers that we should show support to? Are there any authors or any movement leaders that we should be paying attention to? And where can we learn more um, about the movement and resistance within West Papua? Yes, our movement now is a campaign is globally. We have different, uh, uh, we have our brothers and sisters and networking, like networking in different country, like in Europe, in the Pacific, in, in, in Australia, and in US. In US, yeah, we also have a West Papuan Action Network, and also we have a West Papuan uh, yeah, Human Rights Centers. That's one that uh, we are established here in Washington DC. So we try to yeah, educate people uh, about uh, what's happening in, in, in my country, in West Papua, and, and also free West Papua campaign in, 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 other, in other country, uh, like, how we yeah try to yeah use the social media networking uh, so we created like different groups in west in, in different country to stand together solidarity to bring all boys um, uh, together but here in us in in us we have a west papua human rights center now like yeah we are still uh, uh, building up our our new website uh, new website to to publish maybe in the in the coming weeks um, and so people like, can start to learn about the uh, how we collected the information, documenting story from the uh, uh, West Papua, because it's very clear based on the uh, uh, U.S. State uh, yeah, Department report, Human Rights State uh, Department report. That's, uh, that's they're, they're showing clear that human rights violation is happening in West Papua right now from the last year report and also this year report published on March 1st from the uh, US uh, yeah, the Department of State uh, report, human rights report. Uh, it's very clear showing that a human rights violation is happening in, 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 in West Papua. Uh, but also, yeah, you can yeah, do a lot of research also in Google. I mean, you can find more, more uh, information like from the Amnesty International. They also published their report, the uh, ASEAN uh, uh, Human Rights Group. ASEAN Human Rights Group also, they, yeah, publish all the report about uh, atrocities that Indonesian uh, government is continue to to uh, yeah uh, doing in West Papua. Uh, so yeah, I think this is a uh, yeah I would uh, say today. So yeah, keep in yeah touch. I, I have my email uh, information. I live in Washington DC. Uh, we hope that we organize the peaceful uh, protest outside the Indonesian embassy uh, in the coming week. So I hope. Uh, you can help me as well. Come, come to Washington DC, uh, Indonesian embassy. We yelling to Indonesian government, free West Papua, let the West Papua to get their freedom. So that is something that's, yeah, I hope for our next plan for organize more protests outside the Indonesian embassy to our focus to, yeah, ask for the stop uh, uh, training uh, Indonesian uh, military uh, in, in West Papua. Uh, 
Thank you so much um, for sharing and thank you so much for everything that you've offered us today and for um, taking the time uh, to join us um, and discuss this topic that really is not talked about, but is going to be, and we're gonna work on this and we're definitely gonna do some organizing from here. Um, and if you want, could you please share like your email or your like socials with people so that we can stay in touch with you, Herman? Yes, I have my social media. Uh, so you can type my name, full name, Herman Wengai. That's that's an easy, quick way to, yes. to reach to me, uh, Herman Wengai. Uh, uh, so I have my yeah, social media Facebook. So you can you can follow me from there, and then just feel free to yeah send me message, and then I can uh, uh, reply and yeah with other friends and try to yeah raise more awareness about the. West Papua, and uh, but yeah, like I say, uh, don't forget to check uh, out uh, our West Papua Human Rights Center uh, website. Will be published very soon. Thank you so much. Um, so we're just gonna take some time to go through a couple of reminders before we all go. Uh, so we have an upcoming organizing 101 training this June, if you would like an opportunity to explore how to put solidarity to action on your campus or your community. So keep an eye out for your emails or you can write to this email that I'm going to put in the chat um, <clears throat> to explore other ways to get involved. Um, and the centers is a uh, in, is an endorsing organization of the upcoming People's Summit for Democracy, which is a counter summit to the Imperialist Summit of the Americas being held in LA between June 8th and the 10th. So if you're in the LA area, please consider dropping in for the array of panels and cultural activities and learning related to internationalist struggles across labor, the environment, and gender. If you can't attend, the event is going to be screened on YouTube. And again, keep in touch with us through social media at We Are Dissenters on Twitter, Instagram, and the like. Um, thank you again, Herman. And definitely folks in the chat, just like send your love to Herman for taking the time today to speak with us about his experience. Um, I'm so grateful to have gotten this opportunity to speak with you. And um, I hope that others learned as much as I did. Thank you so much, Sam. Peace to you all. Yeah.